Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, and you are watching Actors Daily Bread. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. You are in for a huge treat. As you can see, I'm not alone. Today, I have a very special guest. I have a working actor, career coach, and the founder of The Global Actor, Elise Arsenal. Did I say that right? Yeah. Arsenal? Ar Arsenal, either way. Arsenal. Arsenal. I'm sorry. Let's repeat. Elise Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenault. <laughs> there we go. Good morning. Listen, if this is your first time watching, I know this is not live live, but it's live for you right now. If this is your first time watching, put a one in the comments. If you've been rocking with me for a little while, put three. If you're an OG member, we go together. Put OG in the comments. So all my replay watchers who will watch this later, what's up? Replay watchers? Love you guys. So I'm so excited to have Elise here. We met Actually, I heard, I heard about you through the, you know, interwebs. The beautiful thing about being a, a career coach and coaching actors and in this scene, we get to see, we see each other in online and ads and classes and courses, but we actually got to meet in Oregon, in Portland, when we went to a, a retreat for coaches and we, we had our own little hub of acting coaches. And we totally hit it off and got to hang out and spend some time together. So welcome to Actors Daily Bread. Welcome to the Hollywood Bound Actor podcast, because we're going to put this on the podcast as well. Thank you for taking the time. It's, 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 we're recording this on a Sunday, mm -hmm. and because we're busy ladies, That's so we're right. actually getting it done. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I love what you do. You're such an inspiration, and it was incredible to meet you in Portland. And yeah, I'm so excited we're Yay. here. Now I'm and Y'all, I love her mic. So th the reason why I invited, <laughs> it's a little details. And this is important because Elise has recorded over a hundred audiobooks. So I know I get some of you asking me about voiceovers, audiobooks, that kind of thing. And I'm straight with y'all, like that is not my zone of genius. And I believe we have to know what our zone of genius is. What I love about what you do, Elise, you talk about how you like to inspire actors to live where they want and work when they want. Right. And you, that's what this is part of the whole global actor thing. And you split your time, you travel a lot with work, but at the end of the day, you can do what you do from almost anywhere. Isn't that right? Right. So absolutely. tell my audience if they're brand new to you, maybe they have seen your face, you know, floating around here and there, tell them what you do and give me a little background in about, about you. You have an amazing resume. I want to, my people oh, to know. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. So let me just talk a little bit about the global actor and like what that life is like. Um, yeah. So yeah, I really... I believe there are so many limiting beliefs that I took on early on in my career that kept me from living a life that was in the flow, living a life that made sense for me. And there came a time about um, four or five, six years ago where I realized, you know what? I just need to make my career work where I am right now right. and let's do it. Let's figure that out, whatever that is. And then I realized I've been doing that my whole career. <laughs> so for the past 15 years, wherever I've been, it's like, whenever I hit a dead end, it's like, okay, switch directions, hit a dead end, switch directions. And mm -hmm. it's not always a 180 turn, um, but I've always been after how do I get to the next thing? And sometimes it's looked so different than what I imagined it was going to be. Yeah. So once I discovered that like, wow, there's so many people who don't know they can live their career their acting career like this mm -hmm. um, and make it work for them no matter where they are, no matter how much money they have, like it's all possible. So um, I began doing this work with actors in a formal career coaching way. Uh, mm -hmm. The Global Actor was founded about three years ago okay. um, and it's group coaching. Uh, that's my signature offering is group coaching. So the Global Actor Power Groups, because I love working with four to six actors at a time. Mm -hmm. I do some private coaching as well. And then we've got a super supportive uh, Facebook group, hashtag Global Actors. And um, yeah, that's the beginning. I'm going yeah. to go on this long tangent. So. No, and, I, and I, I love that. And I think that's, there's this, I, there's this idea that if you don't live in New York, if you don't live in LA, if you don't live in like Chicago, that, you know, might as well, you know, chuck it up. It's not going to happen for you. And I coach actors from all over. And I know that's the farthest thing from the truth. So I love that the idea of taking the stigma away from that, but being clear on what your path is and what it is that you want to do, because depending on the kind of acting you want to do will determine where the best place is for you to be. And sure. if you're doing something, especially like voiceovers, audiobooks, um, 
you know, the, so, the voiceover world, again, it's, I'm promising to, to learn more about it in 2020. Mm-hmm. I have to take it bit by bit. Mm-hmm. But it's so layered. There's so many ways you can do that. But tell me about, you know, you have a lot of theater background. You've done improv. Tell me about how you got started as an actor. I like, I love hearing these. For sure. Yes. So I'm from this smallest state in the country. I'm from Rhode Island. And (laughs) it was my goal to leave Rhode Island and never come back. And today in this moment, right now I'm in Rhode Island. So let me tell you how I got back here. (laughs) Because I actually love being here right now. And I also love traveling. And I also still have further goals, which eventually would be a place in LA, a place in New York. So I'm, I'm not at the end of my story yet, which is also a cool thing is that it's all a process. Um, but when I was starting out um, after high school, uh, I always knew I wanted to be an actor, uh, but I really cared so much about what my family thought. And early on, I was just not feeling that they were encouraging encouraging me to pursue performing. And I think that happens for a lot of actors. And so I was kind of really encouraged to become a teacher. Oh. So I went to school at Drake <laughs> University. Total opposite. Like, I want to be an actor. I'm going to be a teacher. Be yeah. A teacher. And so I had this burning desire since five years old. Like, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> so um, so I kind of, I, in, I think I was like in 10th grade where I was pursuing, looking at colleges. I was looking at like Carnegie Mellon, Carnegie Mellon, looking at NYU. For whatever reason, I was like, you know what? I'll just... I'll just do music ed and then I can um, become an actor after. Cause that's mm-hmm. what my parents were like, just, just go for something that can be stable. And then, then you stable, can secure. Do you have something to fall back on anybody y'all watching? Can you relate? Put yes, I can relate in the comments. Okay. Right. <laughs> so um, I ended up going to, I, I knew I wanted to get out of Rhode Island. <laughs> and so one of my brothers went to school at Georgetown. Um, so I was like, oh, Washington, D.C. seems cool. And then I noticed they had a vibrant theater community as well. And so I went, I got this uh, scholarship on a, a trombone scholarship, actually. I play trombone and cello. Um, so I got a scholarship <laughs> to George Mason University because my dad's a band director. and. Okay. Uh, he had connections with like the conductor there and anyway, it happened. That's where I got started. I got there day one. I was already in acting class and I was already auditioning for things. And, um, it was, I think my experience through college is probably what set me up for continuing to just flip a switch. Cause what happened was I got there, started in music education, knew I wasn't going to stay there. I was just like, I, I want to be, I you know, I'm paying for school, actually. I'm one of yeah. five kids. So my parents were like, you all have to go to college, but you have to pay for yourself. So now you're paying for school <laughs> for a major you don't even want to do. Right. right. <laughs> Crazy. To make the family happy that they're not even paying um, for the. Okay, yeah. this is juicy. Keep going. <laughs> and, and I'm the only girl, so I kind of have to please, my, you know, whatever that is, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so going through, anyway, semester by semester, I was moving more towards theater. Um, I got, to, it was, what's really cool is this, I, I thought I would pursue musical theater and it turned out that the whole four years I was there, they actually didn't do a musical theater um, piece at mm-hmm. all. They didn't have a musical theater major, um, but they had a straight theater major they had an opera program that was thriving. And um, so I got involved in both departments. So I, I was trained in opera and then I was like doing Shakespeare and contemporary plays. So it was a really interesting training. Um, and little by little, I was like, all right, let me switch majors. But at that point I was halfway through. So I was able to, it was such a huge university that I was able to create an interdisciplinary degree. So I created my own degree in Thank music you. and theater. Nice. Um, so that was really cool because then I could add a few more dance classes. But ultimately when I finished school, the cool thing about my university was that it's so huge and it's connected to the DC community. So um, some of the singing teachers were singing with the Washington National Opera. Um, some of my acting teachers were in the company of the Shakespeare Theater. So I ended with a degree that, whatever it was, it, it wasn't a BFA in musical theater from NYU or from Carnegie Mellon, but what I ended up was this thing that I had created. Right. Um, so I 
I finished school, went on tour with a children's theater around the country for like a year and a half, then came back to DC and really felt like that was such a thriving community to get started with. And because mm -hmm. I already had some connections from school, it was, um, it was great to just get started in regional theater there. And so when did the transition happen for you for doing, for doing audiobooks and, and voiceover oh. type stuff? How did you, how did you fall into that? Where people are like you have you have a great voice you should try this like how did that work for you because people tell me that and i'm like okay but there's so many aspects to it yeah for sure so fast forward my story because I, I don't want to skip being in new york full time but i did like after this time in dc i was like all right i want to move to new york let's make this happen and i had like this national tour that was going to be a bilingual production of the three musketeers and i was playing some queen character in that and that tour got canceled just before mm -hmm. I moved to New York because it was the recession. It was like 2008, 2009. Mm. So it was just when yeah. I was ready to move, but the world was not ready. Right. <laughs> you know? So it was a rough transition. Um, yeah. I thought I was going to end up in New York right at the end of a tour and be on this place of confidence. But instead, the tour got canceled. I got in a car accident. <laughs> I moved to New York with not the spirit that I wanted and yeah. a city that was just kind of broken. I, I, I remember going for waiting tables jobs and it took way longer than I thought. And the place I ended up was not a, it was not a place that was good for my soul. I yeah. did not find the people that I was hoping to find. And, um, what I determined at that point was let me, um, move back home, uh, save up, go to grad school or get some more training. And it was during that time where I started to notice in Rhode Island, actually, there's a thriving theater company called Trinity Rep. And several actors there were working in audiobooks. Okay. Um, and so it was their day job. So they were doing theater at night and then doing audiobooks during the day. And I think there was like, there were like three different companies here, BBC, Audiobooks, um, Blackstone, Tantor Audio is in Connecticut. So um, after some, when I moved back to New England, I tapped into the Boston scene. And, um, and then I, I think it was like, I got to this point where I decided, okay, I, I got equity. So that was a big goal of mine was just to, to join the union. Yeah. yeah that was, was for me too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So once I hit that goal, I was like, all right, cool. Now what? Right. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's not like I have all this money. Right. Um, it's, it's, ex it was exciting to up level in that way. But then I started to realize, okay, what are my bigger goals for my life? What does like a five year or a 10 year plan look like? And I started realizing voiceover was an aspect that I just hadn't explored. Uh, and part of my training when I moved back to New England was working with Tom Jones, who is a phenomenal voice and dialect coach. He's actually like the go-to person of like Ben Mendelsohn, Nicole Kidman, they grab him for every time they're on set doing an American accent, mm -hmm. they call on Tom. So Tom just happened to be the, the director of voice at Trinity Rep. And I trained with him for years. So most of my post, um, you know, post bachelor's training was voice. So I was mostly like, that's, that was just kind of like a no brainer that I would explore. Voiceover. And and the fact that you got to do it and have that training and be mentored by someone who was actively in the trenches and doing what you, you know, you get to learn. It's one thing to learn in theory. I think we all can relate to that, but to be hands on and someone be like, no, like this is how I, this is, I just did a gig, excuse me, I just did a gig and this is what I learned and this is what I did. I think that's also what you and I do with our audience. Like, because we're in it and we're doing it and it's, we get to coach and mentor people from a different place of knowing and not mm -hmm. just theory, which I think Absolutely. is, which is, and a lot of times in colleges too, no disrespect to some of the pr professors and teachers, but a lot of times they're, they're not in the trenches anymore. They've only gone to school to become a teacher, right. which we need which we need, but there's just a different level of understanding when you actually are going through it and you can pass it on. Yes. You know, a lot of my, the bulk of my audience of actors that are watching or listening, you know, have desires to work in film and TV, but they also don't even realize what some of the other options are. And 
what are some of the misconceptions about not just voiceover, but specifically audiobooks? Because listen, I just, y'all know, I just released my book, Playing Small, yeah. available on Amazon. Yeah. But I just also, rec I recorded the audiobook. I'm waiting for Audible to approve it. Uh -huh. And my book, it was not super long. I think total, it's like, and it was meant to be a, sh a quick read, but it's like two hours and change. Uh -huh. But it was still, it was in the studio, it was still, I realized I was using different parts of my of my of my body, my breath, my focus. You think, oh no, big deal. I'll just read these lines. I I have I can act, you know, like, and it was like, oh, this is challenging. Oh, I need a break. Oh, I need to do that again. Oh, why do I sound that way? What are some of the misconceptions I think of of doing this work that you do? Maybe some of the misconceptions and challenges. Sure. Maybe one misconception might be that it's easy. It's just reading out loud, and you've read out loud to um, kids before, so why not? Right. Um, <laughs> But I do think, I think it's worth diving in and at least I like, I recommend every actor try doing this because you might be surprised that it's a fit for you, especially if you love reading, <laughs> like right. if you don't love reading. You, this is probably not going to be the job for you, but if you do, it's what's incredible is you get to, I think of it as a one person show. So mm -hmm. like you are putting on a one woman show and you are playing all of the characters. So when I'm doing a fictional book, um, sometimes there are 20 to 30 characters that I get to come up with, that I get to create. And right. most audiobooks today are self-directed. So also, really, cause that was going to be my next question. Like how, keeping track. Cause I live, I live in LA guys. So the traffic is always horrible. So I listen to audiobooks all the time. And when I listen to one that's either fiction or nonfiction, when they're going in between these voices, I'm like, how are you keeping track? of all these voices and who's directing you. You now you're telling me like a lot of them are self-directed. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's challenging. It, it, it is. But at the same time, I've got a lot of tricks to help you with it. So I would say okay. like when it comes to creating characters, just take out the voice memo on your phone. And every time you get to a new character that you're going to create, you know, voice it and then just go back to it. If it's been 20 pages or 30 pages or Ooh for 10 months since you did read a book in that series. Um, gotcha. Good nugget. Write that down, y'all. Good nugget. Okay. I also think the advantage to doing this kind of work is that it forces you to be a business person. You really do need to keep track of things like that because you are your own director. The consistency is up to you. Mm. Um, reaching out and building relationships with different producers, different clients is up to you. Um, and really the work is there. There's so much, uh, literally every book that's being produced today, they're trying to turn into audiobooks. So think about that. Think about how many books are out. There's right. plenty of work for everyone. So if you do want to dive in there, you definitely got that option. And I think I, it's my belief that if you have theater training at all, or even if you've taken a lot of acting classes, you have gifts you have skills that you've been working on for years that someone who is not an actor trying to be an audiobook narrator does not have so like that's what i was going to ask you because i you know what actually a friend of mine she, her um uh her boyfriend like has a really nice speaking voice and she was like how can you get into like voiceovers or something you know and that's the thing a lot of people say oh i just have a nice voice yeah people tell me I should do voiceovers, you know, as people ask, should tell me I should record some books. But so what I I'm all those calls actually, <laughs> <laughs> we're not always but, ready to do the work. Actually. Right. Because it is work and it is, that's what I, the main, I was excited to have you on because even though a bulk of my audience like wants to do film and TV, because they have the skill of creating characters and, and giving an emotional tapping into their emotions and, you know, being present and knowing how to act, that is a really beneficial part uh, and skill for going into this field. Uh, the work that you do with your clients, do you teach people like start here? Like if I'm like, how do I even get into this? Is that what you shed a light on? Yes, I start from wherever you are. So like if we were, if I'm working with someone in a, the group coaching or private coaching, I start with where, wherever they're coming from um, and then take them all the way to getting clients, managing clients once they have them and getting more and more of this work and then balancing it with the rest of the acting career. Mm -hmm. um, and actually in my upcoming course, I'm going to be really outlining the whole process. So everything from- Is that, the, is that your ditch your day job course? Yes, ditch your I love that. I love that title, by the way, because that is like, yes, I want to ditch my day job. <laughs> it speaks directly to the, to the, to the, to the goal. Um, okay. So great. So 
having the skill. And I think that's the biggest thing. People just want to know, give me an A to Z. I don't want to have to go all over and piecemeal this together. I think just taking the, the guesswork out of it. Um, you know, <laughs> do you, what do you enjoy more uh, doing? If you mentioned you do, you've done a lot of fiction, do you do nonfiction as well? I actually would like to do more nonfiction, but I barely ever do. I've probably really? done like four or five. Out of my 100 books, I've probably done like four or five nonfiction at the most. Which is weird to me. I don't know. Maybe the, I, I keep getting cast that way in fiction. So gotcha. I imagine it's my creation of characters or I don't, I don't know. But Yeah. Uh, um, what is the, you know, here's a question I wanted to know. And this is just me being selfish with my question. The time requirement, the time requirement, especially when you're doing it on your own, like my mother, for instance, my mother, Valerie, shout out to her. Um, she has a book that she, I got her to write. <laughs> She released it some years ago about her journey with lupus. And so she went to Audible to look for some, uh, um, an actor or, or voiceover artist to record her book. So she's been taking all these auditions. And she was telling me, she was like, Christine, some of these are horrible. She was like, people here. She said, I hear some people have echoes in the back. Sounds like they're in an empty like hallway. You know, she's like, who like? I was like, wow, I was really shocked to, to even hear that people were submitting these subpar auditions and, the, and it would be expected, right, that you're supposed to record it in whatever you're sending me, like whatever sample you send me, don't I assume that that is what my, my finished product is going to sound like? Yes. However, not everyone is aware of that. So I think, <laughs> I think a lot of people are just like getting started and they're like, this will pass. And right. It's actually surprising that sometimes books are produced that subpar. Ooh. Yeah, I've actually, and I've had some people, you know, some people come to me with like, I've already done a book and I listen to it. And I'm like, whoa, you need to work with a post-production engineer. Yeah. So that's another thing is like, it is an investment and there are a couple different ways you can go about this work. So working with publishers if you are able to bypass ACX, if you're able to bypass some of like the middle ground and can go straight to publishers based on referrals, mm -hmm. um, I recommend doing that because then you just have to do that, the acting and you show up, you do your narration, you prep ahead of time, um, but then you don't need to worry about the levels of your sound, um, mixing and mastering and finishing that. That said, there are plenty of people that you can work with and actually... Um, we co-own, uh, my husband and I co-own a recording studio mm -hmm. and part of what we offer is helping people get their space set up. Set right. up. So it sounds right. Good right away. Um, because you don't want to start, you don't want to, you don't want any book you do to sound less than great because that will live on audible forever. Right. So, and, and <laughs> people may be searching you and even if you've done like a really awesome book, if your ACX book happens to be on the top, that's your first impression. Right. And it's a lasting one. It's like your legacy online. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think even if you're, you know, we hear the, you know, voiceover actors too, I've seen they're, they're in the closet, they've got the sheet over their head, they've got the pillow, trying to do anything to get started there, man. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> right. I have a closet right here and I recorded my first couple of children's books in there. You've got to start with somewhere, but, but get help. Don't, right. don't think you can figure it all out on your own. Cause I love it. Do you have any resources, um, um, any kind of, uh, freebies, downloads, or any way that my audience can keep con connect with you maybe to learn more, to put their toe in the water. Maybe they're not all the way sure that this is even they don't have no idea if they want to do it or not absolutely what can you yeah. share with my audience sure. i have um, a voiceover starter kit that i would love to share um, oh yes they can get it at bit.ly slash vo starter kit okay and i'll put that in the show notes and yeah. um if and you're that, of course when you're watching this the link will be above or below yeah and within that you're gonna get this um this PDF guide. And then it, then it also comes with eight accompanying videos on just getting started. And then you also are connected to the tree cave, which is our recording studio, which we also consult. And we do everything from um, audiobooks to ADR to podcasting. So if you just need some help with tech in general, that's yeah. a great connection for you. Awesome. And where can people find you on the interwebs, you know, Instagram, Facebook, I know we're always on Instagram, text, emailing yes, each other. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, so at Instagram, I'm at elisearsenault.actor. At, um, I, mine don't match. At Twitter, I'm at eliseact. Um, and then on uh, Facebook, I'm uh, slash work with Elise. Work with Elise. And I'll put all these in the show notes. And, and the if you're watching this, you will see the links. You know, when I got um, my Twitter, I, there's so many Christine Horns out there. And so by the time I got to Twitter, so my Twitter was Horn Christine. I was like, darn it. And it was like this girl had, and it turns out she, the girl who has my, my Twitter, were born on the same day. Isn't that what? freaky? That is. Yeah. That's really crazy. Wait, and she didn't make it up. Like I, I Googled her. Yeah. What? That's <laughs> oh my God. Born on the same, I was like, it's freaky. So no, I get it. So sometimes <laughs> you can't. That's a lesson for you all listening and watching, you know, try to get your your name try to always own your name i always tell people get your domain name you know your name.com or dot org you know and even if you're not on the platform you're like i don't use linkedin i don't use facebook just get it because you never know because i'm actually surprised how many elise arsenals there are that i was really yeah i was able to get my domain name but i wasn't able to get any of those (laughs) that's it's weird yeah yeah. Elise, this has been so, so helpful and eye-opening, and I, I hope it inspires you, um, for those of you listening and watching, to, you know, find other ways. You know, I'm a big advocate for multiple streams of income and for being, uh, having a diverse way. You know, your acting career doesn't have to be this one lane only because that's all you've seen. I think if we explore, there's other ways to, you don't know how people are making their living. Like, and you know, the, the, the beauty of doing audiobooks and voiceovers and things like that, once you get started, like you get Lisa's uh, starter kit and learn more, you start adding things to your, to your, like I, I didn't always have a Yeti mic and I got that. And then now I have this, you know, you just keep getting pieces and see, cause you might really end up liking it. And you can do it in your pajamas. <laughs> Absolutely. That's one of the best <laughs> benefits. <laughs> Anytime oh, of day or night. <laughs> oh, I love it. At least thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for rocking with us here at Actors Daily Bread and Hollywood Bound Actors. Again, I'll put all her links below. And if you're listening, it'll be in the show notes. Have an amazing day. Continue success in your career and to the global actor family. I'm so glad we got to do this finally. Thank you so much. Me too. All right. Bye.